Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the part 2 on the phosphatases. Uh, in the part 1 I've told you that phosphatases and they are actually enzymes that are important for the regulation of cellular signaling and these phosphatases I've told you that they are very important in maintaining a balance of phosphorylation in biological systems and phosphorylation is actually a biochemical process in which you add a phosphate group to a protein or a molecule thereby altering their structure and function and i've told you that this phosphorylation that actually act as a molecular switch thereby regulating a variety of processes in the biological system like the growth metabolism and gene expression I've told you that these phosphatases, what they do is that they are going to remove a phosphate group from the phosphorylated proteins or molecules, restoring them to their original state. And I've told you that these protein kinases, they add a phosphate group to the uh, target protein uh, on their serine, threonine or tyrosine residues, thereby converting them into the phosphorylated protein. And then these uh, protein phosphatases, they are going to remove this phosphate group from the serine, threonine or the tyrosine, thereby converting the protein into their original state. Uh, then uh, as you can see that these phosphatases, they are working in opposition to kinases. Then I've told you that there are different types of the phosphatases and we discussed one important type in the previous video and that was the protein tyrosine phosphatase and I've told you that these protein tyrosine phosphatases they actually dephosphorylate the proteins which have been phosphorylated on their tyrosine residues. So if there is a protein that has been phosphorylated on the tyrosine residues and if you want to remove that phosphate group from the tyrosine residue you are going to use the protein tyrosine phosphatase and I gave you uh, two examples. Uh, one example was the CD45 that was involved in immune cell signaling and the other one was the SHP1 uh, which is uh, you can say a negative regulator of inflammation and that also regulate a variety of the intracellular signaling pathways. Now in this particular video I want to focus on the other important types of the phosphatases. So uh, the second important type of the phosphatases, they are known as the serine threonine phosphatases. For short, you can call them as the STP. So it will be the serine, threonine, and then this P is going to be uh, for the phosphatases. Now, as the name indicate that these phosphatases, they are going to remove the phosphate group from those particular proteins which have been phosphorylated on the serine or threonine residue. So as the name indicates, this is the phosphatase, that means it is going to remove a phosphate group and before this, uh, this, this serine and threonine is actually showing the substrate, that from which particular substrate or from which particular amino acid, this phosphatase is going to remove the phosphate group. So if this is a serine threonine phosphatase, that means it is going to remove the phosphate group from the serine or threonine in the residues of those particular protein which have been phosphorylated on the serine or threonine uh, amino acid. So for example, uh, if this is a serine uh, in the target protein, uh, then comes the uh, serine threonine kinase. This STK is the serine threonine kinase. Uh, so you are going to have this phosphoserine. Uh, there is no phosphate group on this serine. You have added a phosphate group over here, thereby converting this into a phosphoserine. Then come the uh, STPs, the serine threonine phosphatases. They are going to remove the phosphate group from the serine amino acid, thereby converting this into their original state. If you talk about a threonine, so if the threonine has been phosphorylated uh, by the serine threonine kinase, adding a phosphate group to the uh, threonine amino acid over here, then the serine threonine phosphatase uh, that would come and that is going to remove the uh, phosphate group from the threonine. So uh, this serine threonine phosphatase is going to remove the phosphate group from the serine or the threonine in the uh, target protein. If I give you examples from this particular class of the phosphatases, one important example is the protein phosphatase 1. And this protein phosphatase 1 is very important in the glycogen metabolism. Uh, there is uh, an important enzyme when you talk about the glycogen metabolism and that is known as the phosphorylase enzyme. Now this phosphorylase enzyme exists in two states, the active form and the inactive form. What happens is that when you need the activity of the phosphorylase, you are going to add a phosphate group. You are going to add phosphate groups as you can see over here. 
these blue balls they are actually going to show the uh, uh, phosphorylations or the phosphate group so if you need the activity of the phosphorylase you are going to convert the phosphorylase from the B form into the A form and you achieve this by adding phosphate groups over here so a kinase would come that is use the ATP as a source of the phosphate group and this phosphate group they will be added to the uh, phosphorylase thereby converting it into the phosphorylase A form and this is the active form of the uh, phosphorylase and this is going to uh, go for the breakdown of the glycogen. Now, if you do not need the activity, say for example, you are not interested in the breakdown of the uh, uh, glycogen, uh, what would happen is that this PT1, this protein phosphatase 1, that would come, that would remove the phosphate group from the phosphorylase A, thereby converting this into the uh, phosphorylase B, which is the inactive form of the phosphorylase, and the glycogen breakdown, that would stop. Uh, another important example is the protein phosphatase 2A, and this protein phosphatase 2A is a critical regulator of multiple cellular processes. For example, if we talk about the targets of the PP2A, uh, they are the uh, uh, RAF protein, the NEK protein, the AKT protein. Uh, so that means that in these particular cases, the PP2A may act as a tumor suppressor because all of these genes, they are very important for the uh, uh, cell division. So the P uh, PP2A, uh, by dephosphorylating the RAF, the MEK, and the AKT protein, can act as a tumor suppressor protein. The third important class of the phosphatases, uh, they are known as the dual specificity phosphatases. Now you need to understand, again we are talking about the phosphatases, we talk about the tyrosine phosphatases, so the target was tyrosine. We talked about the serine threonine phosphatases, so the target was serine and threonine amino acids. When you talk about the dual specificity phosphatases, so the dual, these dual specificity phosphatases has the ability to dephosphorylate both the tyrosine, the serine, and the threonine residues. That means it can uh, dephosphorylate, it can remove the phosphate group from the tyrosine amino acid, it can remove the phosphate group from the serine amino acid, it can remove the phosphate group from the uh, threonine amino acid. Therefore, we call them as the dual specificity. Now, one prominent example from this particular class is the MAP kinase phosphatase, for short that is known as the MKP1. And this particular uh, phosphatase, it controls the duration and intensity of a signaling pathway, which is known as the MAP kinase signaling pathway, an important signaling pathway for the cell division. Now, what this MKP1 do is, it is going to deactivate an important enzyme in this MAPK uh, in this MAP kinase signaling pathway, which is known as the MAP key. So this MAP key is an important member of this particular signaling pathway. And what this do is that uh, this MKP1, it deactivates this particular MAP key by dephosphorylating the threonine and tyrosine residues are residing in the MAPK's activation site. So if this is the MAPK, as you can see over here, uh, that it has been phosphorylated at two sites. It has been phosphorylated on the threonine amino acid over here. It, can be for, it has been phosphorylated on the tyrosine amino acid over here. And when, the, when you have got these two phosphate group, the MAPK remains in the uh, active form and it can go for the division of the cell. When this dual specificity kinase come, it removes the phosphate group from the uh, tyrosine amino acid, it removes the phosphate group from the threonine uh, amino acid, thereby converting the MAPK into the uh, inactive form. So what this means is that it can control the MAP kinase signaling pathway by dephosphorylating the uh, tyrosine as well as the threonine amino acids in the MAPK uh, enzyme. Now, how these phosphatases, they are uh, regulated. Now, these phosphatases, they are subject to regulation through a variety of the mechanisms. Uh, for example, they can be regulated by post-translational modification and association with the uh, regulatory proteins. Another important one, you can uh, uh, regulate them by direct oxidation and phosphorylation. You can uh, regulate them by proteolysis and they can also be uh, uh, regulated by binding of inhibitor proteins 
and these inhibitant proteins in turn may be regulated by phosphorylation or dephosphorylation so what it means is you can regulate these phosphatases by a variety of the mechanisms now what are the clinical implications and uh, research importance of these uh, phosphatases so when you talk about the their role in the diseases so this uh, dysregulation of phosphatase activity that has been linked to numerous diseases including cancer the diabetes and the neurodegenerative diseases and i have given you an example of the cancer in this particular video so if the uh, dual specific dual specific uh, specificity phosphatase it cannot dephosphorylate the uh, mapk enzyme that will be uh, that will continue the cell division and uncontrolled cell division and that would ultimately lead to the uh, cancer when you talk about the their therapeutic potential so the understanding the phosphatase biology that is going to open doors for developing targeted therapies that modulate phosphorylation state in specific diseases so if you have got a problem with the uh, dephosphorylation and if you identify the target that where the problem is coming for a particular disease you can actually go for the uh, therapeutic uh, intervention in that particular case and you can treat that particular disease so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and share it with your friends i'll see you in the uh, next video